Even as Colorado has trended toward Democrats in the last few years, tax cuts on our ballot have proven popular with voters. Conservative groups are putting a property tax cut on the ballot in November, unless a state commission comes up with a tax cut that's more to their liking. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger takes us inside their back and forth today. The commission that has to come up with a way to reduce property taxes or at least minimize future property tax increases just gave itself more time to figure it all out, partially because of the people trying to put issues on the ballot for voters to decide in November. If nothing is done here, there, there will be a ballot initiative. Former Republican state lawmaker Josh Penry represented Colorado Concern, a conservative business group, which supported the governor's Proposition HH in November, but is now partnering with one of the thorns in the governor's side, conservative activist Michael fields. Government shouldn't be growing faster than our wages and what we just saw this year is a huge spike. Together they have proposed three ballot issues that would reduce property tax rates to 2022 levels and then cap the state's property tax revenue each year at 4 percent. That would mean smaller property tax bills but also fewer dollars for schools, fire, police, water, trash, everything your property tax dollars pay for. Their three proposals all call for the state to cover the dollars that would no longer be coming from your your property taxes. I think it's easy to say, hey, state, you take care of it. Make sure we do full backfill to the locals. But that immediately then raises the question, where does the state find two and a half billion? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that for us? The idea of a backfill is not new. You all have talked about it before HH contemplated it. Um, the difference is you did it with taxpayer, it was proposed with taxpayer refunds rather than from the base budget. If we really do need to backfill, I don't recommend taking money from the state budget. What I do recommend is finding an additional revenue source. Scott Wasserman is from the Progressive Bell Policy Center, which has its own ballot issues that would try to block the ones from Penry and Fields. One of the proposals says if their 4% property tax revenue cap is approved by voters, it cannot take money away from local governments without voters opting in in a separate election. Our measures this year are meant to counter their measures. They would not be on the ballot but for the threat of ballot Armageddon. Awful movie, Ballot Armageddon. That property <laughs> tax commission was supposed to present a report to state lawmakers two weeks from today. Ideas for potential legislation or ballot issues proposed by lawmakers. A little more than an hour ago, that commission gave itself more time until next month to see which of the citizen ballot issues qualify for the ballot and what they may need to actually compromise with. In a way, and this is very imprecise, but in a way, it's almost like there's a shadow legislature or a shadow government, which is the ballot process in front of citizens in Colorado that at least the right sees as their best way to win on issues these days. We talk about the lack of conservative power in the state legislature. It is at the ballot. The, the issues they can't get through the legislature, voters are interested in when it shows up on a ballot, mm -hmm. and this commission, slightly more democratic than, than, than anything else, uh, has to figure out what can we do to take some of their ideas but not have it be as drastic as, as the worst case scenario in their minds. And everybody watch Ballot Armageddon before it gets taken off of Netflix this weekend. <laughs> Marshall, thank you.